Hi everyone. Thanks for joining me, Allison Shelton, for Where I'm From, number 61 with Casey Mulligan. Walsh, full name. What I'm Reading, No Choice by Becca Andrews, who was actually Where I'm From, number 52. She joined me with her own poem and it was wonderful. And this book, No Choice, which is um, The Destruction of Roe v. Wade and the Fight to Protect a Fundamental American Right, is very good. I highly recommend it. And a call to action, and a passionate plea for all of us to get involved in reproductive justice. Hi, Casey. Hi. Hi, <laughs> I'm like, oh so no, good she can't hear you. me. <laughs> <laughs> no, this and it's my first Instagram live, so as you can see, I, I'm kind of a luddite. I had a little technical issue, but at the last minute, I realized I had to be on my phone, yep. not yes. the laptop. But good, here yes. we are. It worked. Okay. I'm so glad, and you look very festive. I love your. Well, I tried to find something. That, it's growing out of my head, basically. <laughs> but whatever, but we do what we can. It, exactly. I am on the floor yeah. in my child's room. That is my studio. So exactly. <laughs> it is what it is. Um, yeah. So how are you? I'm great. I, I'm, you know, oh, I had a little mishap on Thanksgiving. Oh, so I, I have a little broken oh. wrist thing, but it's, it's minor. It, it took me six days to go have it looked at because I figured it was just sprained. So I'm fine. I'm good. Yeah. yeah. How are you? I'm pretty good. You know, considering this time of year, I always feel I like um, no matter how calm you try yeah. to be, things pop up. I um, I took my child this is to true. holiday shopping because he wanted to get some gifts for people. Uh -huh. And I congratulated yes. him on doing it now. And he said, well, you don't want to leave it too long. <laughs> oh, good for him. Oh, my goodness. That's yeah, I was like, well, okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Life so, advice. Um, Thank I, you. I, I, um, I always get frustrated when people talk about the weather, but you are in Southern California. Yeah. So could you have done this outside? <laughs> I mean, it's cold for <laughs> Is here. it that warm? Um, okay. No, it's like right. 60 degrees, oh. which is cold oh. for here, but not for anywhere else. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. Just curious. <laughs> I know it's, uh, I, it was, I've, I we went Christmas tree shopping. The gentleman who helped us with our Christmas tree is originally from Chicago. And oh, I went to college goodness. there and I said, yeah. Oh, it's rough there, right? With the weather. I was mm -hmm. like, oh, mm -hmm. it's paradise here. <laughs> Even and I think it's summer at the oh yeah, at the Navy Pier, it might as well be winter. Well, especially like um in June. Early yeah. June is still very right. not it enjoyable. Is. So um, it is. It is. Yes. So would you like to begin or? Okay. Okay. Go for it. It uh, it doesn't matter. I have what I'm reading because I know you like to talk about what you're reading. Yes, and, and I have read that wonderful Jeanette, book. Yes, Janine. Janine Willett. Willett's wonderful book, "The Part That Burns," and I just love it. I had read a little of it before, but I've decided to go back through it and do a good read, you know, beginning to end. She's and just a wonderful writer, wonderful teacher. I was going to say wonderful, wonderful person. person. Yes, she yes, just, and absolutely. she did a where I'm from poem. Oh, I'm she, not going to be able to come it. up with the number. Oh. Yeah, she did um, a while ago, like the summer, um, 40 yeah. ish, maybe. Um, okay. And she, the book I'm reading is no choice by Becca Andrews, who also did a where I'm from, which is about reproductive, reproductive justice. And it's well, amazing. you've got so many wonderful writers and where I'm from. I mean, I've been kind of taking little tidbits Very blessed. and scrolling back and looking. And most of them, I'm like, oh, I know her. I know. I know. It's fun. Yeah. It's, it's, such a, yes. it's such a fun thing for me to meet all of you, yes. like, yes. in yes. this environment and to have a, yes. a personal exchange with all these people yes. that many of whom I know online. I do have people I, I know in real life. But yes. many of them are people I know online. And yes. Janine's a perfect example. Somebody who I've been on many, many Zooms with and right. has given me a lot of wisdom and guidance. Yes. But we have not well spoken. 
<laughs> and I think we've been together yes. on the uh, the progress for uh, the yes. uh, advancing healthcare yeah. project. Yeah, project yeah. for advancing health with stewardship. Her, Stewardship, that I think. <laughs> um, I got to hang out with her a little bit at Hippocamp this year, sure. which was great. Yeah, we had a really good time. Yeah, yeah. she's just a great friend and, and learned from her too. You know, what yeah. she gave a session. So yeah, I love, great. I absolutely love yeah. her yeah. writing prompts. I tell her every, every session. Yes, me too. Yeah. I agree. Agreed. Mm-hmm. So. All right, I can go or we can chat, whatever's best for you. Go for it. I think okay. it's fun. I think it's nice to be finished as the person who's doing the reading. That's my true. opinion, but true. You know, just it's true. true. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> I am from, can you hear me? Am I yes. speaking loud enough? Yes, I you're wonderful. I told I'm too soft. <laughs> okay, wonderful. Um, I am from Library Books, from Fuller Brush Perfume and Kenmore Sewing Machines. I am from Cookie Cutter Rental Houses, Rooms Painted Pink and Electric Stoves, How My Mother Hated Those. I am from Avocado Trees Grown from Pits and Birds Outside the Window and the Audubon Guide, The Lofty Maples Whose Limbs I Climb, Then Stay In, Afraid Till Daddy Gets Me Down. I'm from Old Jaguars and Terrytons with lipstick stains from Bob and Elizabeth. I'm from the New York Times Crossword and Van Gogh Sunflowers and Daredevil Irish Charm from As Long As You Did Your Best Baby and Hey Mabel, Hey Matilda. I'm from Church on My Own, from The Lord Is My Shepherd and Families Who Take Me There. I'm from Everywhere and Nowhere, Go Where They Tell You, French fries shaken in paper bags to soak up the grease and Waldorf salad every night from my Louisiana mom swept away by the dashing Yankee soldier from loving parents and hospital stays and sorry they're gone you live with someone else now far away in my dusty basement are spelling bee trophies glowing report cards victories never enough to temper the loss photos of a smiling girl standing alone. I am from north and south, shaken, not stirred, a blend to carry them both. (sighs) And I did Casey. Yeah. (laughs) Understand. Yeah. 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 I did it. (laughs) I I feel like because you write about it quite a bit and it shows up here in the Mm -hmm. poem a little like it, I think it's important to say that you were orphaned at a young age age 11 yes well i uh was 11 when my father died and my mother died 10 months later when Mm -hmm. i was 12 yeah yeah and then i was sent you know to relatives i knew a little but you know far uh, like three hours away so a whole whole new life you know i often um used to think of it as the um you know the stuffed animal machine where the claw comes and picks up the stuffed animal into but I kind of like they kind of picked me up and just mm-hmm. dumped me there mm-hmm. so I mean not in that way but definitely you know taken out of mm-hmm. of any environment I knew or yeah yeah well yeah, all, so. all your light all your stability in your community mm-hmm. and so you weren't just losing right. your family you were losing your whole community which is so important in, in grief right. I have found yeah like to have people yes. who understand what I can't even imagine what that was like going to a new school. Did you feel like well, you I needed already, to? I had already moved a lot. Like yeah. when I was a child, we moved a lot anyway. So it was kind of used to being the new girl. Mm-hmm. But I had a brother who was seven years older than me. Yes. So at 12 and 19, those are two very you know different experiences. Yeah. So he stayed. I was in northern New Jersey. So he stayed there, got an apartment, married young. Um, and I, you know, went to upstate New York, but then he died at 27 of a heart I, attack. I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I mean, I the know. amount of I grief know. that you've yeah. had to live through in your life because you've also, you had a child who died, right. which right. Right. I mean, right. that's the nightmare, like your piece still yeah. in split lip magazine. Mm-hmm. I, I mm-hmm. is stunning. And thank you. Just a magnificent piece of writing if you have not read it you should it's short (laughs) like it's so powerful and and I think that's 
sort of nice when talking about something that's so difficult because then you're like, okay, I can, I can do yeah. this. Like I, uh, well, I can... and also, you know, it's written all except for one word is one sentence. Yeah. And so I think the writing and the reading, the situation lent itself to that kind of writing because yeah. It, there's this breathless quality and it's urgent. And I think even in, even in when I read it back, I'm like galloping to the end, you know, cause you're holding your breath, which mm -hmm. I, I think that you almost have to have a situation that fits that style. I don't think you could right. write that way about anything, you know, right. um, but I've been obsessed with, with micro memoir or, yeah. you know, really compressed flash lately. I just think there's magic. In it, I agree. You know, I agree. Which this is what this is in a way. Yeah, I think know, it is. The power. I've called it that, and I, I think yeah. for a lot of yeah. people writing it, and I've said this, like it, it gets you to dig in different places than you might normally with mm -hmm. your writing. Like I don't really write That's about cool. smells usually, or you know those kinds no. of. And you talking about the electric right. stove. My mom yes. is the same way. She also hates electric stoves, and it just yes. those tiny yes. details. I. I do think they make people come alive. And I think sometimes, particularly when I we agree. just begin writing, we feel like, oh, right. this nobody needs this. Like, I need to get to the whatever that is, the yes. beat of it, yes. you know. Yes. But those things yes. are essential. Absolutely. Those and I think that when, um, it's funny, Michael Todd Cohen is somebody I interact with a lot on, mm -hmm. on Twitter. And he had put a call out, I don't remember, like last year, just some, you know, little tweet, like, mm -hmm. what is it you love about Flash or compressed mm -hmm. Flash nonfiction? And I had, I had answered and he used it in a piece he oh. wrote for Catapult. And I can't even tell you, it was just a quick little bit. It was kind mm -hmm. of like, uh, it, it like opens something in your mind that you wouldn't usually it takes you places you wouldn't usually go, like this little cognitive trick. Because a lot of these things in here, of course, the George Ella Lyon poem, the way that you have it kind of like the Mad Libs. It, it Isn't it amazing? It out of you. It's awesome. And I so love there it. There are things in here I think I could use those. Like, I never thought to write about those mm -hmm. things when I was just writing scene and chapters. And so I, and it's similar to to what back to Janine's um, prompts. Yeah. They well, do and that's the same who introduced thing. me to They're this not, prompt. Yeah. <laughs> that's Janine. In, in, the, in a project for Advanced Health Stewardship Workshop, she's, I know so many people yeah. are aware of this prompt, but I was not. And so she yeah. introduced yeah, me I to it. I wasn't either, no. Yeah. I'm so grateful. And it is similar I, to the prompt she creates, I'm, for sure. I don't know if it's only me, Allison, but you're you're breaking up a little yeah, bit, so that's why I wasn't it did. Now it's back you. to normal. Yeah. Is it for you? Okay, good. Um, ish, but it's okay. okay. I can okay. get enough to. Yeah, we're all right. We have it moved. Okay. But why yes, it I think that? this poem is amazing. I know, I know. Um, I've mentioned this to several people and um, you know, educators and somebody I know, uh, my niece actually, who's a. Um, Oh, uh, I don't know what to say, but she works for the Workers Institute at Cornell. She's a labor leader, mm -hmm. basically. Mm -hmm. And um, both of those people are, oh, I've used that poem, you mm -hmm. know, either in workshops or with my students. So mm -hmm. a lot of people know about it, but I didn't know about it either. No. So I think it's fabulous. I think everybody should do it. I, I do. I think it's, I mean, and I know people, a friend of mine did it at like a conference with, with social workers. They did it like when they came it's together great. as an icebreaker. Mm -hmm. And I thought, wow, that's a mm -hmm. really, because mm -hmm. I yeah. enjoy having these conversations with people where you're not yes. like, what's your name? And what, I mean, you know, where are you from? It's like, it doesn't yeah. really dig a little in. deeper. Yeah. 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 So, so yeah. Well, I think a lot of us who write are not big at small talk. Yes. You know, we want to talk yeah, about things that are meaningful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, it's true. I guess that is part of it. Yeah. I've always thought it was, be, I've always yeah. thought it was partially because I didn't ever felt like I fit in, it, like as a well, a, me too. So. You know, as like a surface <laughs> yes. person. Yes. So I was like, yes. oh, but when I get into real conversations with people, I do feel at ease. Right. It's right. I think yeah. because you start to like see that you mm -hmm. have things in common, even though you may not have things in common on the surface. Right. 
because so I because I never felt like I really was fitting in, all, in that yeah. Yeah. world. Well, it's funny that you would say that because um, you know my book is really. It's I expected you to ask me what the book was about, and you didn't. But <laughs> it's hard. It's easy to stumble over the plot. But really, the thread or really what the book is about is the search for belonging and the difference between fitting in and belonging, which is exactly what we're talking about. And I always, you know, I'd way rather have a, a meaningful conversation with one or two people than have to function in a big group of people. I still am kind of that way. Yeah. yeah. Similar to you. Yeah. yeah. It's, yeah. That's a really beautiful like, topic for a book, Casey. Like. I mean, I think that's really well, important. It's interesting. I think that I think this happens to a lot of us who write memoir that that understanding not the situation, but the story evolves as you're writing it. I didn't start out thinking that mm -hmm. that was the theme mm -hmm. of my mm -hmm. book, but it was um, a big revelation when I realized it, you know, it really helped. How long have you been working yeah. on your book? Because it's finished oh, right. now, right? And you're looking for publishers? Is that where you're Well, at? yes. Is it, who, who said that um, art is never finished, only abandoned? I know. Like, <laughs> I think... Is it ever really finished? For me, that's the biggest um, obstacle to actually writing a book, is feeling like there has to be some ending. Oh, I don't know why it's doing this. I don't know why I the internet... Yeah, I don't know why it's. Yeah. I have full bars. Do you have bars, Casey? Hmm. Weird. Okay, you're kind of back. I yeah. You're kind of I back. think it must be Instagram well, I'll, because I'll I have bars. I'll answer your question about. Yeah, I have full bars. Too, yeah, and like all the Wi-Fi. It's weird. I think Do, it's am Instagram. I cutting up at all? Yeah. 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 I, I think, think we're cutting off for oh, each I other. Oh, I haven't see here. I look fine. Okay. Right. All right. Yeah. Well, stop me if you can't, you know, if you can't understand <laughs> what I'm saying. But um, the first words, you know, that I ever wrote that made their way into this book were like 11 years ago, that I wrote essays for about six years. Um, and then in 2017, I just kind of sat in a hotel room one day and made these kind of fictitious chapters and tried to see how it would work as a book. Um, and I've thought I was done a couple times and I really wasn't, but I feel, I feel very good about it now. There's some, still some sections in the middle that I'd like to dig into again, but I, um, I'm submitting to small presses. I just really feel like for a lot of us, memoirs and grief books, small presses are the perfect home mm -hmm. for books like that. And mm -hmm. I honestly don't know, even if I got an agent. If I want to wait all the time it takes for then the agent to sell the book, and I just think I'd be thrilled with an independent press. I think um, it's so a that's wonderful choice. Right now. I yeah. really do too. I, yeah. Because also, isn't it? Because the question I ask myself often <laughs> is, "Why yeah. am I doing this? Why?" I know. Um, I know. And it is to get it to people. Like it is right. to connect with people and to hopefully exactly. provide a mirror of that's some right. kind. That's, that's, that's helpful. Right. You know, um, I, I was talking with another writer about who she had had a, an essay that won awards and it was about her niece's death and she was mm -hmm. feeling kind of guilty. And there is that element of like, so am I capitalizing mm -hmm. on this terrible thing? And so we wrote a little bit back and forth about it. And, and for me, I think that, you know, we write about grief partly because all of us as writers are like, we can't really sort things out until we write it. Right. Yeah. But I also think that it, it, it helps other people feel less alone, but yeah. it other, also increases empathy for people who haven't had the same experience. Right. That's why we read memoir. Um, so uh, why did I say that? I don't know. I, I think where I started. Because we were talking that. about why do we do it? Like, what do you hope with yeah. your book, sort of? Yeah, and yeah. I, th yes. I think you're yes. saying you, you hope to reach people. Yeah. Right, exactly. Because that's why exactly. you're doing it, and not because you are, I'll speak for myself. 
I'm not yeah. doing it. I am not the person who is like, my story is pretty amazing. <laughs> no, no, no. I need not to write this all. book. Not you know, all. like that is not. Writer friend, very close friend. <laughs> who, so who I'm going to use her line forever, um, which is that she, it's not a how to, it's a how I. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. I love that line. Yeah. Um, Karen Debanis. She is. Oh, yeah. Coming out, yeah. But that's yes, just a, a fabulous. It's a fabulous line because I don't think pretty much any of us who write memoir, at least if it goes anywhere, are writing it because we think everybody else should live their lives the way we did. It's right. not really what we're after. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> but I do it. think, don't I mean, then there's did. data that says that reading does increase empathy. Yes. Like, it's not even just our opinion. Yes. It's actually a scientific right. fact that reading about others' experience Absolutely. does increase empathy. Absolutely. And I, Absolutely. as a person who does read fairly voraciously, it got me, yes, you do. it's gotten me yeah. through so many difficult times before mm -hmm. there was social media and there was Absolutely. this larger sort of network of people. Mm -hmm. I felt very alone right. and books yes. helped me feel less alone. And I actually, oh. when I had this conversation with Becca, cause she is also a voracious reader, the woman who wrote no choice. Mm -hmm. I was talking about, I read pretty quickly and I think it comes from mm -hmm. the desire I read as a younger person, like I was just mm -hmm. hungry to find something that helped. And mm -hmm. I still sort of read with that impulse of like, I'm looking for something. It's, I yes. don't read like, Oh, this is, you know, <laughs> I mean, I read with a mission. Right, right, um, and right, I think, right. I don't know that I'll ever read any other way. Like that's just. I think as a child, a lot of us read, I mean, I read voraciously from the time I was really young. And for me, a lot of it was this, I just wanted to be in another world. That too. You know, it was escape. Mm -hmm. um, and then, yes, as I, I think as we get into our teens and older, we start reading for um, how can, what are other ways to live through an experience like this? Or how do yeah. other people And that you're not the only react. one. And you're not like, the only one. Absolutely. Um, that yes. you're not carrying the shame alone. And it's still like, I'm right. still like, just two days ago, I was introduced to the idea of ambiguous grief. I oh, have never heard yes. of that, that yes. phrase. And I yes. have it because I am estranged from family members. Yes. And yes. I was, that's what reading does. It gives me language mm -hmm. too it to does. help understand myself yes. and what yes. I'm experiencing, and yes. and and writing does that too, actually, because it sort of forces me to sit with what was mm -hmm. my experience. And right. I, I'm right. guessing you have a similar experience of writing. Like sometimes you'll think it's Absolutely. something when you sit down, right. and then as you right. reckon with it, yes. it evolves. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I, it's funny. I want to come back to the ambiguous grief, but mm -hmm. I used to always say when I wrote essays, well, I started writing with Marion Roach Smith, who was local to here and she mm -hmm. taught, um, now she teaches all online, but so she was very uh, adamant in her, it was 750 words. Mm -hmm. That was it. You could not go one word over 750 <laughs> words. So I learned early on that I'd start to write and get maybe two thirds thirds of the way through and then you'd have that like oh that's what this is about mm -hmm. and then you have to go back through and kind of weave the thread all the way through but yeah I think that a lot of us think we know what we're writing about till we start to write it and then mm -hmm. then we're like oh there's this other thing that just came came out of my fingers and I don't know where that came from right, right? it feels um, like something greater whatever thing your thing is does. it does yeah. feel magical and a friend of mine who's a visual artist was talking about it that she feels that too where it will like she will be overtaken with you know spirit god mm -hmm. nature whatever you want yeah. to say yeah and she was like i don't think anybody really talks about this because we feel sort of like it's a little bit woo woo i was like oh i feel the exact same right. way and she yeah. was so relieved yeah. <laughs> absolutely absolutely so true yeah. um being in the flow thinking. i guess is well, what the, they call like it the ambiguous yeah, yeah, the flow. Yeah. Exactly. So that leads me to some, like, so this is like true confessions, right? Still has gotten such great response, you know, just yeah. such an overwhelming response and comments and they, and shares from writers I revere, which yeah. is like, you know, and it's not, well, I'm
writing that way more often these days, but it's not traditionally the way that I had written. Mm -hmm. So then the danger zone is like, well, yeah. I'll never write it anything like that again yeah. you know maybe I should just stop you know? <laughs> so we're just we're our own worst enemies in so many ways yeah um, and that's you know, why even it, when you have the great yeah the great yeah. yes and that's why it's so important to have community I oh, I don't think I'd be so doing funny. any of the things I'm no. doing without the community because no. it's so easy to get in your head and just just be in your head oh. Yeah. <laughs> just stay there well and then, so it's as you well know when you're submitting i mean submitting essays is one thing but when you're submitting a manuscript you're going to get many many rejections oh, yes right and yes and, uh, you know it, it's just it's a long it's a slog it is and you have it, to kind of be in it for the long haul yeah. uh, it, it's intimidating just even though it is no i'm not anywhere near yeah. it it's still just like yeah yeah <sighs> So I'm wishing you all Definitely. the best, so and I, were, I hope you oh, find well, thank you. the perfect I home. I use it. <laughs> I really do hope you find thank the perfect you. home, and I look thank forward you. to reading your book. You so and much. if you want to talk about ambiguous grief, I don't want you to forget that you wanted to say something about ambiguous well, grief. Well, just just that um, there's so so this is uh, it gears into a couple of places, but I was just listening to a podcast, a grief podcast yesterday. This isn't a new term to me, but where they were talking about cumulative grief. And I was just talking with a friend on the phone and she brought up cumulative grief. So that's the other, you know, grief upon grief upon grief. And it doesn't matter if some of the grief was 50 years ago and some of it was 20 years ago. And sometimes, I mean, pet loss is its own very valid and real grief. But sometimes that unpacks previous grief. You know, and I think that's just that's the thing, you know, right? Is how it all sort to of think relates about, but also to each other, how it like how it all because it's kind of like and complex then, PTSD. Like it's yeah. this because yeah. I thought in your yeah. piece and still because you were orphan, like how you talked about mm -hmm. your fear of losing a child right. because you had lost your parents, right? I think most because my brother died when I was ten. And that, and my husband's right. father died when he was 13. So that's something we okay. both were very living. We were li living with that li yeah. reality. Yeah. And I think most people Absolutely. who have someone die when they're young, that's been with them always. Mm -hmm. It's unshakable. Right. Yes. And Absolutely. then when and other people me, die. You know, now my other children have lost a sibling, right? So then right. you... you you kind of, that's another overlay. But, um, you know, we hear a lot about anticipatory grief, yeah. you know, when someone is ill and you're, you know, yeah. but I kind of coined this term and I think I coined this term. I haven't found it anywhere else. And this is a little more tongue in cheek, but I write a lot about what I call preemptive grieving, mm -hmm. which is, I think a lot of us do this when we have had a lot of loss where, you know, I, I, I have an essay with this in it where I used to, my husband would go off to work. The husband, I call him the husband in the happy ending and he'd go off to work and I'd say, don't die today. You know, oh, like yeah. come home. Like, you know, the grieving that you do almost to, um, to hold it at bay. Like if I, if I picture that happening, then it won't happen. And it's not really a healthy coping mechanism. No, but it, but it does ring true. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't it? Doesn't oh it? yeah. Well, oh, it's gosh. like, the, okay, I have it's, enough life yeah. insurance. Like what would I, you yeah, know, like, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, because yeah. we will be in or the I community. Would like, like, the like you'll be in community with people and you'll realize, oh, they don't think like this. They don't have these experiences. Yeah. They just assume their spouse right. will live forever and their kids right. will live forever. What's that like? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like what, I What's that like? With one of my kids and I, you know, it's just like, right. It's that script in your mind. Like I'd hang up the phone and think, and that was the last time. They <laughs> like it's like I'm making the movie all of the time. It's, and people don't understand that. They think it's kind of funny, but the people who know, know. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yes. And you have to laugh at yourself. Yeah. 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 You, it's like, it's right. And you try to have a healthy yes. relationship with yes. it. Like yes. I see you. Yes. I acknowledge you. Right. You're not real. Right. But now go away. Yeah. Go away. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. But you're not real. <laughs> it's true. It's um, so true. Yeah. And it, I try to explain to people that it hasn't controlled my life. It's not right. like I, um, you know, I did 
I, I, we travel, my kids do right. whatever they do. Right. Like, I'm not like, stay right here, something could happen. But, you know, it's, I think from, and I know, from a very young age, death has been, um, it's a reality. Like, I knew very young that it happens, and right. it happens again and again. Right. Um, and more and more. It mean it's going to happen again, and more and more. As you grow That's older, right. like, yes. it's not going to be less. <laughs> No, it's you know. not. It's yeah. not. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We've just had actually a period of time. The last month, we've lost. Now we've had two losses in the family, but we've been connected to people with three other losses, and like a twenty-nine-year-old girl who died of a heart attack, I'm like so young, sorry. tragic sorry. loss like that. And those aren't, you know, those are those aren't my griefs. But it's just one of those periods of time that you get into that you just don't, I don't want to answer the phone. <laughs> don't call me. It does happen like that, you know? though, doesn't it? Does. It? it does. Because it I've does had three to. periods in my life where it's like many, yeah. many like my yeah. dad, grandmother, family friend, boom, right. boom, boom. You and know? those and were significant to you, yeah. Yeah, and you're like, yeah. okay, I, I, <laughs> I, I can't. And it is that not wanting right. to answer the phone for sure. And yeah, um, yeah. it does seem like I, I get to, it. I, I, yeah. to sort of cluster. You're like, I, I get how fragile life is now. I don't need right. any more remarks. Can I have a break? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's triggering me a break. Yeah. It's exactly yeah. right. Yeah. 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 So, um, mm. yeah. It just, I think we have all kinds of relationships with grief, right? When you yeah. think about it. The, the, ambiguous and anticipatory and cumulative preemptive it's definitely write about it Casey, are you writing about it if i have okay oh yes because I, I think that's yeah. brilliant fact, i have a hermit crab essay about okay. it but i it's not quite there yet i think but and it's in the book so i don't feel like i have read yeah. about that and that no. is such a real thing no. and my husband yeah. and i joke about it where we'll be like yeah. oh other people don't think about it the way yeah. we do yeah. like we we're grateful That's really right. for yeah. all every single day yes. that we're both yes. still here. And you know, it's funny. I know a, a number of couples like you mm -hmm. where there is an element of shared loss and, and, you know, because there's a piece of that person that you understand that not everyone does. Yeah. So it makes sense. You know? Well, and yeah. I mean, I, my mother, her mother died when she was three yeah. and my yeah. brothers mm -hmm. are my half brothers and their mother yeah. died. Yeah. So it's really Ever, so everywhere every one in my life um close and so I, I i it's like one of those things where you, you realize it, like when you're a child you don't you're going oh yeah, yeah. instagram why uh, <laughs> <laughs> am i back God. i stopped you're, you're back i stopped okay. because yeah. you get funny and then you can't hear me right. now you can't hear me Allergy. Yeah, yeah it, it'll be interesting Net talk if yeah. on the if on the it'll be interesting on the replay if it plays like this it might play totally normal it's weird how this right. happens sometimes I um hope so i hope yeah, so too yeah. but it's like when you're, you're a child and can you hear me casey yes I can. <laughs> okay <laughs> when you're a yeah. child and you think everybody's yeah. family is like yours you're like, oh, everyone lives like this, whatever it is. Right. And then you slowly right. realize, right. oh, no, they don't. They definitely don't live yes. like this. And yes. it's Although like that I with grief. Say, I, it's absolutely like that with grief. Yes. For me, my life um, as a child, we moved a lot. Oh. My parents were sick, like my childhood. So I knew. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's hard because I actually often think about other people. So I think that they lived. Uh, yeah, of course. Stable land. I did. But, but I really think she was just this belief of, and not earth shattering. I think we all know this, but that everybody has a story. You know, like if you stand in line 100%. at the grocery store, every person in that line has something that they're carrying. Yes. You know, we just don't yes. know. And, you know, so. I agree. True. That's a great place to end because I yes. absolutely agree. And I also just want to say, I did read your keep things because I was in it this week. Oh, and so oh, I, I yeah, yeah, That's I read right. yours and, and in your poem, 
and I was like, oh, Bob, and I knew the Mabel the and brush. yeah, all of Until that. Then. I was like, oh, I yes, don't. I did re- this. I did recycle some things. Well, we do. We do recycle things. Yes, we do. Spoiler. We do. Um, yeah, but it was. <laughs> I was, did you ever find out what the brush is from? This is my, because you said you found out that it wasn't a fuller brush brush and you didn't know. Deborah from the kids is like, yeah, I don't think that's a fuller brush. I'm like, you know, I think you're right. I think, but wouldn't it be funny? I, then I thought, well, maybe it was a, like a, um, you know, an anniversary award, but right. Fuller Brush wouldn't give him something that wasn't Fuller Brush, right? right? So maybe somebody just bought it for him. I don't know. There's no markings on it at all. Mm-hmm. Um, and I did find similar things on eBay oh, you know, from that period okay. of time. Yeah. So mm-hmm. it's, it's interesting, you know, there, so much of them are a mystery to me because I really don't know people who knew them. Right. You know, my father has some relatives here that did, but they were kids and he was an adult. And mm-hmm. so um, some things I just make my own little story, mm-hmm. you know, cause that's what you do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So this Allison, this has been just great. Oh, I really, oh, I really it. enjoy it. I'm so glad yeah. that you were able to yeah. join me and to share your poem and it was beautiful yes. and I'm, I'm thank grateful. You. So me thank you, Casey. Too. All right. Thanks Allison. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye.